Okay, so I'm installing my Renogy 400 watt solar system, the MPPT controller with the remote. Went to put the remote, and of course the first hole I drilled happened to have a support member behind it, so I couldn't get through, so now I have an extra hole. But that'll be okay, because it's going to be all covered up by the, by the, uh, the bezel of the controller. So now I'm just trying to figure out how to get the wire through there. Okay, so couldn't get it to feed down. Next, I went underneath the refrigerator. Underneath here, can't really see, but drilled a hole up, hoping that I could then feed the wire down the side of this wall, down into there. However, I was not successful with that. So now I've fished it out to the exterior, to the refrigerator access panel, and we're gonna see how that goes. Here we are, day two. I'm standing outside the Class C. And this is the refrigerator access panel. There's an area here where the wires are fed down through the base of it, the shelf that it sets on. This goes down into the dinette area, the bench seat where all of the electronics are. I'm gonna try to run the wire that goes up to the controller, this piece right here, down through this hole here. Excuse me, let me get this out of the way. Down through this hole here. Unfortunately, it's filled with insulation that I'm gonna to have to try to chip away out of there because that's pretty dang solid right now. I'm gonna also try to run the, uh, the, the wire down from the solar panels down through this area and down through there so I can get it over to the controller as well. So I'll get back to you after I get this chipped out. After a lot of cussing, I finally got this thing out of here and turned it and then found that there was actually a screw holding it into the base, but of course it was on the back side where you can only get to it during the assembly of the motorhome. So that's pulled out now and I'm going to continue on. I'm going to try to show you. I can look up there myself, put my head under there and look up and see the venting. So I wanted to see how hard it was going to be to get those cables down from the ceiling or from the roof, excuse me. And it's going to be pretty easy actually once we get to that point. So let me put the camera under there and see if you can see up there. Yeah, there you go. You, can, you see the light up there? That's the vent on the ceiling. So it shouldn't be any problem bringing the cable down from the solar panels. The slots, the mounting slots in the Renogy controller didn't quite span what I needed them to span. So I had to take the handy dandy grinder. These are the original spots here. And I had to make another slot here so we can make the span. No big deal. Gonna mount it up now. Okay, so we got it hooked up to the batteries anyway. We got 13.2 volts. Looks like my batteries are actually a little bit low, so I'm gonna get those charged. The controller down here, wires were exactly right at eight feet for me to make it. Came up again through the floor there into the charge controller. The battery box is just right over here. Opened up the battery box and found that I need to do some maintenance on my batteries. Look kind of dirty. I'm gonna check the level of the uh, distilled water in them as well. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go next to the automotive store, get some fuse holders as I don't have it fused yet, and some battery terminal spray so I can keep that from oxidizing as much as possible. So next up is onto the uh, solar panels. Here's the backside of my Renogy 100 watt panel. The kit I bought came with some Z-clips to mount the panel solid on a flat surface without the ability to tilt the panel, which I didn't want to compromise that. I do want to have the ability to tilt the panel. I shopped around for some mount kits. A lot of them out there seemed like they cost as much as a panel itself. So I uh, kept looking. I found these Windy Nation uh, aluminum kit to mount these on the roof of the RV for a reasonable price. The only issue with it is that these are meant to mount to a flat surface and the top of my motorhome has got a curved roof. So I'm going to have to cut the pieces that mount to the roof into shorter segments to account for the curve and then I'll be able to mount the panel to that and be able to tip it when I want to. Once I'm done, I will, uh, I'll show you kind of what I did and maybe some little bits and pieces along the way about how I did it. Hey Draco. What do you think about the new setup on the solar panels? Huh? You're kind of being quiet about it. You want to tell everybody about what you think? 
You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Okay. Well, anyway, as I was telling you before, I was going to cut those bottom pieces that mount to the surface of, this, of the roof of the motorhome so that I could account for the curve. And so here's what it's going to look like. There might be a little bit of issue with the one here with the four holes right here. Might be a little bit of curve, but I can probably fix... No, Draco, there's nothing there. Okay, you're messing up my video. So anyway, you can see, I think once I mount these two these pieces onto the roof and I die core it, it should stick pretty well. And it was going to give me the ability to tilt these panels in a few different angles, which I really like. And anyway, I will uh, I'll, we'll get the rest of these done, and the next part I will show you as I mount them to the roof. I know I said on the last clip that the next clip would be me mounting these onto the roof of the RV, but I just wanted to show quickly, now that I have all the mounts modified so that I can put these up there and tilt them, and they should accommodate the curve, that this is how they'll look. This will be lined up down one side of the RV because I went up on the top of the roof and played around moving them here and there and here and there trying to figure out what would be the best way to collect the light and not be inhibited by vents and air conditioning and TV antennas and all that other thing. And I find I'm just going to run them up and down the side, one side. And so here's what they'll look like when they're deployed. See, there's the little thumb screws. Probably going to be a little bit of a pain each time we have to do this, but we'll probably only do it when we're going to be set up for a while in one location. Here's what the back side looks like. As you can see, again, like I was saying, I kind of cut out the middle of each of those angles. Those angle, uh, that aluminum angle, because it's not angle iron since it's angle aluminum, but Anyway, it's cut so that may accommodate the curve of the roof of the RV. And so the next part is going to be taking all these things up onto the roof of the RV and mounting them. Plan on using well nuts and then die coring that. And we'll see. So next step, roof mount. The plan was to take all these solar panels and run them down the passenger side, just line them up end to end like those two there. And when I mocked it up, it seemed like it was going to fit. But now, with the mounts on them, I can't clear that bent cover right there. So I'm playing with other ways to mount them, I'm trying to keep in mind not to block the sun when they're tilted. I think this arrangement will work okay. I'm using these well nuts or expansion nuts or compression nuts, whatever. It seems like there's a lot of names for them. But you put them down in the hole, you tighten this up, and this rubber comes up and seals up tight and kind of expands into the hole. Definitely need it. This top is really thin. I don't see how you could put a bolt in there or a screw in there and expect it to hold. But anyway, this little lip right here sits up on top of the rubber roof and it makes these things not quite sit flush. They kind of move a little bit. They aren't really tight but I don't know I'm not really happy with it I don't feel like they're as solid as I would like them to be so I am going to uh, try another approach at this and I'll let you see when I'm done so here's what I've done I've taken this product called Dicor Butyl Tape it's used in the RV industry and a lot of under other industries as well cut a piece and placed it underneath the bracket and then tightened the bracket down and I'm much happier now it's taken up some of that difference in elevation It's very solid now so what I'll have what I'll do after I get all these done is I will then coat all this with lap sealant or I'm sorry self leveling sealant So even though I used well nuts to attach these brackets, they say that you don't need to uh, use any other type of sealer on those because they're rubber and they're supposed to seal the hole. <clears throat> I do live in the northwest and we do get a bit of rain up here, so I decided to also use the Dicor self-leveling sealant on all the brackets. As you can see, already getting needles in them. Anyway, next I'm going to put the panels back on. 
So I got, we had the opportunity to get out from underneath the clouds of the northwest and head down to Lake Powell and get underneath some sun. And I gotta say, I'm really happy with how this Renogy system is working. As you can see, we got hitting over 13 amps now and um, it doesn't take long to charge up the batteries at this late rate. So anyway, I would highly recommend the Renogy system.